Are you trying to work out how you can record your piano playing using either your Windows or Android tablet or phone? Well, today, in response to a viewer request, I'm going to show you how you can adapt the advice I gave for doing this using an iPhone to doing it using any other kind of hardware or software. If you're sitting comfortably, then let's begin. This is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists or indeed anybody who loves the piano to share tips and ideas about how to get the best from this great hobby. If this is your first visit here, then please remember to subscribe, just hit the little icon in the corner of your screen for regular weekly piano related videos. Recently, I recorded a whole series of videos about recording your piano, basically using your smartphone or tablet. And of course, being an Apple user, I demonstrated this using an iPhone and using software on a Mac. I'm a member of a piano group on Facebook. and One of my fellow pianists on this group asked me if I could do something that was more aimed at Android because he didn't have any Apple devices. So today, let's do a dive into the Android and the Windows world and see how we can adapt the advice I gave initially to using these different kinds of devices. As always, I'll be focusing on the most cost-effective way of doing this, using as far as possible just the hardware and software that comes with your phone. But if you stay tuned to the end, I'll show you how you can download a free ebook that takes you through all of this in a lot more detail. Of course, the complicating factor is there are probably hundreds of different phones, tablets, laptops, computers available on the market these days. And the combination of these that you have will give you different options. So you'll almost certainly need to do a little bit of experimentation by yourself based on the advice I can give you here. Let's have a little think first then about just the basic workflow rather than thinking about phone, tablet, computer. The other videos that I recorded for you take you through the different steps in this workflow. So the workflow then basically is that first we're going to actually film ourselves playing. Now we'll either do this using a single device with the microphone plugged straight into it and capture the audio and video together, or we'll do as I do, which is to use two devices simultaneously, one to capture the audio file and another then to capture the video. Once we've done that, we can take the audio file and do the editing we need to do. So that's things such as the reverb and the equalization that I've shown you how to do before. The next thing we do is we combine the original video file with our edited audio file, get them all nice and synchronized together. So we've then got one good single file that we can take forward to the last step in the process, which is basically the final video editing. Of course, as I said earlier, you don't need to do the audio editing separately as I do. You know, this is something that I find is interesting to do, but if for you it's just a little bit too fiddly, then you honestly, you don't need to worry about doing it. All right, so now we've looked at the workflow, let's think about the things we need. Of course, the first thing we're going to need is a camera capable of capturing video. These days, pretty much every smartphone and tablet has got a camera that's more than capable of doing this. There may be just the odd one where the camera is designed more just as being a webcam type thing for doing phone calls or video calls, that kind of thing. To be double sure, all I would do is quite simply just do a couple of test recordings using your phone, using your tablet, see how they come out. And if you're pleased enough with the result, then I wouldn't take it any further. If, however, you find that the camera built into your device just doesn't give you very good results, then you might need to think about using something else, such as a DSLR or a standalone video recorder. But I would think this would be a fairly rare occurrence, to be honest. And of course, the next major thing that we need is a microphone. Now, this is where things do change. Of course, the 
device that you'll be using almost certainly has a microphone built into it. Even standard computers these days have a small microphone built into them. However, unlike the camera, the microphone really isn't up to the job in my view to be able to record your piano. This is where you're going to need to get an external microphone to do it. Now, the one I use is by a company called Shaw, which is an internationally renowned company for producing audio equipment. And this is specifically for iOS devices because that's all it'll plug into. However, they produce a wide range of other affordable microphones that provide great solutions. An example would be their MV5 microphone, which is compatible with Windows, with Android, with iOS, with anything you like, really. So based on my experiences with the Shure MV88 for my own recording, I would go with the Shure MV5. Of course, nothing stops you from Googling the make of your phone and see what's the best smartphone microphone for it. Okay, so now we've looked at the hardware, of course, we need to think about what software we're going to use to do this. Now, your phone or tablet will almost certainly come with a standard camera type app that allows you to take photographs or shoot video. And to be honest with you, this is probably all that you're going to need. Provided the camera on the device is good enough, then just use this. However, if you want to take it to a slightly different level, there are a variety of apps that you can download that help you control the settings on your camera, the exposure, the focus point, to a much better degree. The app that I've used in the past is called Filmic Pro. It's a paid app and it's about, I think it's about £20 on the UK App Store, but it's also available on Android as well. If you've already got a little bit of experience in terms of setting exposure and understanding frames per second and these kind of things, then perhaps investing in an app such as this would be a good idea for you because it will allow you to get slightly better results than the standard camera app, but this is purely optional. Once you've plugged the microphone into your smartphone or tablet, you can pretty much go straight ahead and record. You can just record the audio and the video simultaneously through the camera app or through something like Filmic Pro straight into the device. The device will pick up the microphone automatically once it's plugged in and there you have it, all ready to go straight into the video editing step. An optional extra though is to actually capture the audio and the video separately so that you're then able to edit the audio file later. This is something that I generally do. This audio editing is something I actually do on my MacBook. I use GarageBand to do it and I did a couple of videos, as you may remember, showing you how you can do reverberation and equalization using GarageBand. However, don't worry, if you're not an Apple user, then simply download something such as Audacity, for example, which is an excellent free piece of software that does a lot of the things that GarageBand does. It has the same kind of principles such as presets and plugins, and it enables you to do reverberation, equalization. Even better, you'll find that its user interface is reasonably similar to GarageBand. It's laid out in many of the same ways. It uses a lot of the same words for the commands. If you download it and you're not able to work out what to do straight away, don't worry also, there are plenty of tutorials on YouTube on how to use Audacity. Just look for something that has in the title what you're looking to do, reverberation for example. You'll find that in no time at all, you're able to just drag and drop your recorded audio files straight into Audacity and start doing your editing. The last thing we're going to need then is some software to be able to do all of the video editing that we need to do. I showed you how to do it in my previous video using iMovie. If you're a Windows user, then simply download something like Filmora or DaVinci Resolve. Both of these have free versions and these free versions do all of the kinds of things I showed you how to do with iMovie earlier. I always first combine my audio and video together and get them nice and synchronized so that, you know, especially playing piano, you don't want your fingers moving out of time to the music, it would look a little odd. 
Once I've got a combined file, I then do all of my basic video editing using that combined file. And as I mentioned earlier, what's really good about audio and video editing software is that they all look remarkably similar. They all use the same kind of words to describe the commands because, of course, they all reference the pre-computer age. You talk about things like splitting clips and trimming clips. All of these are words that have been used by filmmakers for many, many years, and this has just translated itself into the software that we have today. This, of course, then means that when you're trying to translate advice given on how to use one piece of software to another piece, it's remarkably easy to do, and you'll probably find commands with exactly the same names. To get some ideas about what's possible, I recommend you watch my video on simple video editing techniques, and this will give you the idea of the kinds of things that you can do. You then just need to look in Filmora or in DaVinci Resolve to find where the commands are to do these things. Finally, there are a couple of accessories that you'll almost certainly need. The first of these is, of course, a tripod. And if you're going to record your audio and video separately, then perhaps you'll need two of them. But these are really, really cheap to get these days. You can find them on Amazon on many places, and they won't cost you an awful lot of money. And then to go with your tripod, you need some kind of adapter that will allow you to hold the phone or the tablet onto the tripod. And again, you'll find that there's a great range of these available on sites like Amazon. And then really the final thing you'll need to think about is how are you going to transfer the files from your device onto your computer and this kind of thing. To be honest, there's no simple way to give an answer to this because it really does depend whatever hardware and software you're using. But if you can't find a way to plug one into the other and just do the transfer directly, then think about using things like Google Drive or Dropbox, where you can set up free accounts that allow you to transfer files quite easily from one thing to another. I hope then that this video has given you some ideas of how you can translate all of the advice given in my other piano recording videos using Apple devices to the Android and Windows world. Now for the bonus that I promised you at the start of this video, I've just created the first volume of my ebook on this topic because I realize there's quite a lot of things to take into consideration when you're first looking at recording your piano. There's a link in the description below to that volume for you. Just click the link and you'll be taken to the download. If you're not already, remember to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. And of course, click that little bell icon so that you're notified of all new videos as they're released. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week.